I've put on the PB Wiki site a practice mid chapter six quiz. So this is me taking it up with you. Hopefully you've downloaded it and tried it before uh, you've come to this video. Okay, so let's first, we're going to convert 135 degrees to radians. Now, if you remember, the easiest way to do this is just to make a little ratio. So if I said I have 135 degrees and I know that 180 degrees is pi radians and I'm trying to find how many radians. I've got degrees over degrees, radians over radians. So x is going to be equal to pi times 135 degrees divided by 180. That's going to get rid of the units in degrees and make this in radians for you. So this can be reduced. 135 over 180 is the same as 3 pi over 4. So you could leave it like that, 3 pi over 4. Or you may have used your calculator and got 2.4 radians. Some teachers like you to put rad after it. If you know what uh, the question's asking for radians, it would be assumed that that would be in radians, but you might want to check with your teacher as to how he or she would like you to uh, express that. Okay, convert 11 pi over 6 radians to degrees. So you can do the same thing by making a ratio, or you can just substitute in 180 degrees here for pi and solve. That's what I would do. So 11 pi over 6 is the same thing as 11 times 180 degrees over 6. And that would give you 30 here and 30 times 11. I didn't leave enough room here to write all this out, did I? So it's 330 degrees. That's always the easiest way when you have the pi. Pi is 180 degrees. Number three, what is the exact value? Don't forget when you see the words exact value, that means you're going to be using your special triangle ratios. So what is the exact value of sine of 3 pi over 4? I would write that sine of 3 pi over 4, I would write its equivalent ratio. So using its acute angle, if I made a quick little sketch here, 3 pi over 4 puts me over here where sine is always positive. So the sine of 3 pi over 4 is the same as sine of pi over 4. If you need some work with equivalent ratios, I did um, some of that in one of the previous lessons. So the sine of pi over 4, pi over 4 is the same as 45 degrees. So that's using my 1, 1 square root 2 triangle. So this angle here would be pi over 4 and the exact value opposite over hypotenuse. So that would be 1 over root 2 or maybe your teacher would want you to write that by um, rationalizing the denominator and you would say that's the same as root 2 over 2. Okay here's a little transformation question sine y equals negative 2 sine 3 x plus power over 6 minus 1. The 3 is already factored out for you you don't have to do anything with it other than know that it's k. So state the amplitude. The amplitude is 2. Please don't say that the amplitude is negative 2. The amplitude is always an absolute value. The negative just means that it's been reflected, right? That's a reflection about the x-axis. So you'd say the amplitude is 2. The period, remember period, is 2 pi over k. And in this case, the k value is 3. So that means the period is going to be 2 thirds. Pi. Now graph the function, you can do it one of two ways. You can use key points and plot it or you can uh, just kind of use your head with this one. I'll show you how easy it is. We have the negative one here. Remember we talked about this value here. That is the axis that you're going to put on your graph. So I'm going to put my axis here. So it's been shifted down one. So this is going to be y equals negative one. Now the function has an amplitude of 2, so that means that the highest point on my graph is going to be here, and the lowest point is going to be at minus 3. Now because the period is 2 pi over 3, you might want to take a look at the scale that I've given here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is 
in sixths, so six pi over six is here, two thirds pi, that's the same thing as four pi over six. So that means this is the period, one complete cycle in four pi over six. And um, so the other thing you're looking at here is the shift. It's been shifted to the left pi over six. So pi over six would be one, one quarter of this, right? So when we divide our sine function into four parts like this, that means one sixth of it is going to be moved. It's going to be moved like this one quarter. Now, um, you might notice that that's also like the difference between being a sine or a cosine function, right? But it, if you shifted it and described it that way. So this is a sine function though, and it's a negative two sine function. So negative sine function, remember, goes the opposite way. So it's going this way. That's your negative sine function. And I'm going to shift it to the left pi over six. So that means I'm going to shift it left one, one square over here on my graph. So I'm going to put it here. It's a negative sine function. So every, um, every square is one quarter of my graph. So this is going to be on the axis, the lowest point, back to the axis, the highest point, and back to zero. So if you want to graph this now, you could just sketch it like this, two, three, and we're going to just keep doing that all the way across to the question asked you to do it for 2 pi. So you're going to just keep going like this. Okay, so now you wouldn't have to put this part in if your teacher gets really picky about it to say, well, I only asked you from 0 to 2 pi. So there's 0 to 2 pi. Now the other way you could do it, of course, would be to use some key points. So in that case, we would write out the mapping rule. x and y go to, what do we do to the x? We divide it by 3 and subtract pi over 6. And the y's we're going to do minus 2y uh, minus 1. Okay, and then you want to use some key points of the regular sine function. Don't think about what the other one is here that you're drawing. Just use your basic pi function, pi over 2 and 1, pi and 0, 3 pi over 2. So you should know these like second nature here, and 2 pi and 0. Okay, so I've got all those points. I'm just going to plug them in here. So I have put in my zero here that gives me negative pi over six and minus one. And then the second one, pi over two um, divided by three is going to end up giving me um, zero here because this would be pi over six minus pi over six. So it's going to be zero and minus three. And I'm just going to fill in the rest for you here so as to save time and you can check those on your own. Okay, so these just give you the same points. The only thing with, with sketching it is that you can just keep going on and on. So here we had 0 and minus 3. So this one is on our graph. This one isn't in the domain of the function because the domain was given between 0 and 2 pi. So you wouldn't graph that one but you'd have 0 minus 3, pi over 6 and minus 1, that's this one, pi over 3 and 1, and pi over 2 and minus 1. So there you go. You can do it this way and then just follow the pattern because you obviously aren't going to have all these points, but you can certainly figure out what's happening. Best thing again to do is to check your scale, match it to your period like I did here by converting it to just saying, well, that's the same as 4 pi over 6, and it makes it very easy for you. Okay, hope you find that helpful, and um, we're on to reciprocal trig functions next, graphing them.